Boy, do we have a special treat for you today. It's Starlink Mini Time. So a few days back, Starlink sent out email invites to the first handful of long-term Starlink users. There's been such a huge buzz around the new Starlink Mini. Dr. Scott Walter helping get in touch with Kenneth Klemsack. He's one of the first users of the Starlink Mini. And Kenneth's with us today on Over the Horizon to give us his first impressions. And this, I believe, is perhaps one of the first, if not the first, hands-on look at the new Starlink Mini. So first of all, welcome, Scott. And Kenneth, the man of the hour, thanks for doing this. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Roy. Roy Den. So we've got lots of uh, questions uh, for you. But just first, tell us, take us through how you got the invite, what happened next? Was it on email? Was it an SMS? How did it go? Mm -hmm. So um, many years back, I think it was 2021, I received the invite for the original Starlink dish. So I jumped up on that. So I've been a member since then. And then just on, um, I think it was Friday, I got an email. No, I think it was Thursday night. Mm -hmm. Thursday night, I got an email and uh, from Starlink and it said, hey, would you like to get the mini? So I clicked on it, clicked on the link, saw it was, it was available. And then, uh, of course, immediately posted it on X with, <laughs> with Sawyer Merritt. And he he uh, uploaded a couple of the information regarding that. I ordered it that day, that night. I uh, got a notice that the next day that it was shipped and it, it arrived yesterday morning via FedEx right from, I think it was from right from uh, California. Yeah, Hawthorne. So, yeah. And this was your first post on X once you got it. Correct. Say that again. I'm sorry. This was your first post on X once you got your hands on the. Uh, yeah, that's when I got my hands on the mini. I, I just took it yeah. outside and put it next to that little cricket there. So you know, it's just about the size of a postage stick. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> but it's yeah. small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's worth noting that you are joining us right now from inside your cyber truck with the Starlink mini on your dash. That's right, and it's and it's 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 fine so far because you're stationary. You're not moving. You had a a, a, a few dropouts when you were moving. You were driving around, but so far it's fine. So give us your sense of uh, your first few days of what it's been like, the upload download speeds. And so yesterday um, I got it out. I took um, my I have a EcoFlow Mini uh, power supply, and I just hooked mm -hmm. it up to that using AC. Just in my front yard, worked just fine. I tested some download speeds. I think it was, uh, you know, I had some around 128 meg, uh, megabits per second and then uh, then 160. So it's been fluctuating, but pretty good. You know, very good connection speeds. And that's all I, I pretty much did yesterday. And today when I set up for this event, I uh, streamed some YouTube video and it was working just fine. Oh, so you're powering it off the, the Cybertruck right now. And yeah, right are you, now. Are you, yeah. are you using the AC outlet of the Cybertruck? So I have this little adapter that's an extension cord with a plug mm -hmm. in USB. And that's the adapter right there. This is what comes with it. And it has right. a plug, a barrel plug. Um, what is it? 5.2, 2.1 millimeter? 2.1 by 5.1, I think something like that. By 5.5, yeah, yeah. 5.5, right. yeah. So that's yeah. just the standard uh, plugs that you get all the time. So I tried it on this. Uh, in this, when I um, have, this is show and tell. Right? Yeah. So I have my EcoFlow. <laughs> so I plugged in the back of my EcoFlow with AC, and that worked. And then I could monitor the um, wattage. Mm -hmm. And it fluctuated between 20 to 40 watts. Um, also, Scott recommended that I try the DC output. So this has a DC output right, right there. So I mm -hmm. tried the DC output, and that's 12 volts, 12 volts DC. Okay. And that worked fine, too, just using um, an adapter plug, mm -hmm. you know, just extension cord, because that's what most people would want. They want something small and not, not, not as long as the cable that came with the device, because it's about 15 meters. Sure. So I try both of them and uh, same power level. So I, that means that the wall wart probably was not using that much energy. 
or yeah, losing, right. loss, because it wasn't that lossy. Yeah. All yeah. right. While, while, Scott, uh, I'm just wondering, uh, while we're on, uh, while we've got a stable connection, do you think, uh, Ken, you could just turn your camera and just show us where you've placed uh, the mini in your car? Let's see, going the right way. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so there it, it is. Yes. Okay. So you can see it's it's about the size of a piece of paper, and yeah. the Wi-Fi it's using Wi-Fi five is built in to the yeah. dish itself. So you do not need a separate router like you do for the other Starlinks. So that makes it very portable. It's just one thing plus a very small power pack. Now mm -hmm. I guess you can use it hiking. The only problem is the power. So mm -hmm. you would have to bring your own battery with it. And that EcoFlow battery you have is pretty heavy, but I'm sure there are smaller lithium ion batteries that you probably would be able to bring in a backpack so long as you limit your usage. So it's yeah. going to be drawing, I think on average, maybe 25 watts. You know, it's going to bounce between there. So you need to have one that can have an output of, I think, at least 60 watts, mm -hmm. but with sustain probably around 25. And then you just have to do the math to figure out. It's like, if I went eight hours, how big a battery do I need? How heavy is it going to be? So you can bring it with you. Otherwise, right. you have to power it inside your vehicle. Right. And the Cybertruck, it's a 48-volt architecture, which means it does not have the 12-volt adapter anymore that everyone is used to. So right now, the solution is that you just plug into 110 using the, the little power source adapter there. But you can go direct DC if you want. And my understanding, and this is some, this was news to both Ken and I yesterday as we were going through the USB-C standard. And yeah. evidently, the USB-C standard can go up to, what, 48 volts now? So it's, it's is possible. That, it's, it's like a USB, is it USB-C? Is USB that the USB-C PD? PD? PD, yes, the PD. Right, right. right. The that's PD, PD can do 48 yeah. volts. So, yeah. that's, so, that, so that's where you get the DC from the Cybertruck. You can do that. Yeah. And it can draw like up to 260 watts, which is like incredible because Ooh. I always thought you were limited to about, you know, le less than 10 watts, maybe five watts most and, and, you know, only five volts with the USB. So that means you can go direct, and, but they don't have the adapter yet. You might be able to find an adapter to the barrel jack from that somewhere on Amazon. But uh -huh. it says right there, barrel jack uh, cable accessory. So it's probably going to be in the shop eventually. Right. And, and that should be a nice four foot little cable because right now what Ken has is that the, the old Starlink dish had a really long cable, 75 foot. Yeah. That was power foot, over yeah. Ethernet. So it was both your right. Ethernet and your power. Yeah. Uh, and this is what, cable. about 19 feet? Well, this one I think is still 15 meters, if I remember. So I think it's okay. still pretty long. Oh. So... You know, which would make sense because, you know, if you're camping, you're not sure where your power source is, you know, maybe it's at a cabin mm. and you need to get it out where it's going to have no obstructions. Uh, so it's, but actually it's longer than the Wi-Fi range. Cause remember the dish is also the Wi-Fi, So you yeah. have to be within yeah. 20 to 30 feet of the dish to expect reception wherever it's going to be. So those are some of the limiting factors on there. It's not yeah. ideal. Of course, of course that, that's home. that's if you're in your RV or your van or something. In your RV, right? it's perfect. It's perfect. Yeah. In your home, it may be inconvenient because basically yeah. you're putting your Wi-Fi on the roof, which is not where you want it, <laughs> Right. which right. is why I have. Now, there is an Ethernet uh, port in there that you can run a second Ethernet cable if you want to that you could then plug into another router to be able to extend the range. So that's there. So, okay. Yeah. So it, so it, it, it should mesh with the Gen 2 and Gen 3. Yes, yes, you can measure. Okay. You can measure together if you want. So you, okay, you can cool. create the, the whole net you, that you want. But yeah. what you, ideally, what you could do is if you could get a very simple um, USB PD connector that is maybe like four feet long, mm. and then just plug it straight into your Cybertruck or anything that produces that, and go straight into it, and you get something that's really light and portable without having to carry a 15 meter cable around with you that you're winding up anyway. So yeah, that that absolutely makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the yeah. the important thing is that. Ken is coming to us with the mini dish right now. Okay. So yeah, that's an right, idea that exactly. it's working up, up and down. Yeah. And the same with me, except I'm using yeah. the premium dish on there. So both yeah. of us are coming via Starlink. Yeah, if I could expand on a couple of things that Scott was yeah. saying is that um, the, uh, the component that's going to be shipped by Starlink is going to be USB-C PD. It looks like mm -hmm. it's going to be 20 volts output because mm -hmm. inside the dish is a boost converter. So with my when I powered that off of 12 volts, since it has a boost con converter and you know some inductors in there, you could really hear the um, 
the boost converter humming just you know a little bit like you hear some power supplies i had to get real close to hear it so it boosts it up to like the 43 nominal voltage that it probably needs uh, I, I would think that the one that comes the the pd USB-C PD adapter. I would bet that it's going to be 15 feet also. I have 15 meters long also. Okay. Just just to match the length of the cable. Probably. Probably. Right. Yep. And then another thing you can do is you can put the you can put it in um you know like the mesh network thing. But also I have you know like a travel router. You have travel routers that you can do. You can turn off the router inside the dish, feed that directly into the LAN port, and then this operates off of five volts three amps or you know it's not even three amps it's probably half a half an amp so you can run this and that would solve the problem where oh you have to have the dish way up on your roof and this locally right you could do that with of course and this is inexpensive compared to maybe a starlink type router yeah right. yeah Yep. So, so right now when I try to go portable with my dishes, my dish is a bit bigger. It's the old actuated one. So I get this pole I have to deal with, uh, mm -hmm. and I have to bring the router along with it. So it's a little bit inconvenient that I have all this packaging I have to have as well as all the cabling. The idea of the mini is like, it's all in one. It's there. Yeah. They do have the new standard unactuated, which doesn't have that, that pole in it, but because it has more power, not only do you have to schlep the, the, the gen three router along with it, but you also have to bring a power brick. <laughs> So it's like, oh, one other box, more little yeah. cables and everything else. So it doesn't make it quite as nice for the convenience and portability that this has. So yeah. you can it, do, definitely do backpacking with it. But we have noticed think? one shortcoming. Go and ahead. what is that, Ken? Is You can't use it while driving right now, correct? Uh, yeah. um, fill me in, Scott. <laughs> Where are you going with this one? <laughs> okay, so it's 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 mobile, but you can't use it in motion. <laughs> so oh, you can bring it somewhere possibly. and set it up, but unfortunately, you, while you could mount it on your you know inside your your vehicle, it seems to be limited. To, if you're going maybe a one or two miles per hour, it'll sort of be okay. But once you start going normal speeds, it seems like that's it. And it, it's my understanding is that you cannot use it in motion, and that it's a software limit. At this point, it's not like it's a, it's a hardware thing. It's more or less a software limitation that they, they do not want to allow it to do it in motion. But as far as mounting internally, you've proven it works on the Cybertruck front windshield, which yes. is not tinted. Yeah. And I put it and right here too. There too. And that that is kind of news because we had heard from other sources that tried taking right the, their here. other Starlink yeah. dishes that they did not work mounted there because the yeah. tinting somehow affected the signal. Maybe it this uh, doesn't work when you're driving <laughs> with the tinting, um, but it seems like the Mini is is happy stationary also mounted in there. And that that's also, I think, um, a good thing to know. Yeah. Right. So far, I drove it around my backyard five miles per hour up to 10 and it was still working mm -hmm. I'll, I'll test it okay. further today yeah so we'll, we'll find out whether else, you can take it at highway speeds or not yeah right and something else you were mentioning is backpacking i yeah. have a feeling that you could just take a small foldable power uh, uh solar panels on a nice sunny day you know no sun i know no clouds i mean and uh i bet you could power it directly Okay. Okay. Uh, but if, you guess, to power, right? if you wanted to power it during the evening, then you would have to bring some sort of little brick with you. And I just, you know, figuring out what that would be. I'm not sure how much that would weigh. So um, it's, it's obviously going to be a couple of pounds. You, you don't want to like your EcoFlow. Is that a lead acid battery that they have in there? Or is that no, lead? that's lithium ion. Lithium. Okay. And, and that weighs. I say it was yesterday, 25 pounds. 25 pounds. And did we yeah. figure what 30 hours of operation you would get from that? I think that was, is that the number uh, we came up with? So that's 880 watt hours. This is the yeah. smallest EcoFlow that they make. So 880 and then uh, divide that in 40 into that. Was that 20 hours? Yeah. Right. Well, I think 30, somewhere yeah, for, around there. Yeah. It's 40. Cause it's, do the math at your side. 40 would be the max. So if it's at 40, yeah, then it's going to be, but I think we were thinking it was like maybe around 25. So I think the number you said that with that, you could get about 30 hours of operation, which is not bad, but it's pretty heavy. I mean, you, you don't want to be putting that in your backpack. It's a choice. Do I carry that yeah. or do I carry water? <laughs> it's, it's one, one, one or the other. Um, but you could obviously get something that's smaller than that. 
Yeah. If and use it the, intermittently. Intermittently, exactly. You, call, you could call for water if you needed it. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, bring it an airdrop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so yep. give us a sense of the details of this um, invitation-only program now. What what, a, what is it like? A, around five hundred a dish? Because I think Elon said it would be mm -hmm. cost around half the price of the Gen three. Yeah, but yeah. it's yep. it's about five hundred. So a lot of five, confusion five, around that. Five ninety nine. Now. Uh, I, I can and break a little to bit. Yeah. I, I can break a little news right now because Ken was like one of the OG users of Starlink, which means he has the round dish. Um, I was a little right. bit later in the program. I didn't get the round dish. I get when they get the you know the, the first rectangular dish that came out. Um, okay. And just this morning, I received the invitation. So the invitation says, "Introducing Starlink wow. Mini. <laughs> you are invited to early access. Order by July fourth, twenty twenty four." Mm -hmm. um, Starlink Mini, you know, it goes on about that. And basically, the price is going to come down. They say the price will come down. But right now, <laughs> we're charging you $599. $599, okay. $599. Now, the new standard dish, they just dropped it by $200. That's a deal. I mean, so it went from $499 to $299. Oh. And in order okay. to you get the Starlink Mini, you have to already have normal service with a normal dish. So okay. what this program is, is that they're basically say you pay $599. But you have to pay thirty bucks a month to, to keep it active. So and it's like you an cannot deactivate the old dish. So so that means you buy an original dish. Hmm. Depending on where you are, in most of the U.S., it's one hundred and twenty a month. I think maybe in some sparse areas it might be ninety a month, but one twenty a month. And now you're adding another thirty on top of it to get a second dish that gives right. you mobility. Okay. And that's nice because it means I don't have to take the dish off my roof. Hmm. Um, now there may be different parts of the program. Kenneth and I were trying to figure out these different priority programs, which we think was more of like the standard mobility for the other dishes. Cause there are these RV dishes you can have with different kind of portability, some just within the U S some worldwide, yeah. some of the priority and depending Even on how much priority. Boats. Yeah. Right. Right. So the mini is probably low priority, which means if you're in an area that's saturated with everything else, you may not get really good throughput. But if you're in the middle of nowhere in an unoccupied yeah. cell, yeah. then you might be as good as you know having priority at that point. Yeah, great. So it's thirty dollars in addition, and I did notice that there is an option to pause this service. Yep. So you can sign up, pause it right. if you don't want. Right. If like for instance, you're going to go on a trip, you want know, to pause it. Mm. It's fifty gigabytes only for that I dish, see. and then if you go over the fifty. Then it's one dollar per gigabyte. Right. Okay. After Addition. that. Addition. Mm -hmm. yep. Right. Now, fifty and gigs is pretty good. I mean, if you're doing that on a mini, man, that, they're doing quite yeah. a bit of, yeah. of, of of streaming on that. So I doubt you would ever exceed that limit. And again, it's nice that you can pause it when you need it. Uh, you have to maintain the residential program, and it looks like mm -hmm. um, their speeds of around a hundred megabits is what they're promising. And we've seen that's Kenneth what Elon was, said in the suite. Yes, which yes, yeah. exactly. And that, but, that's but pretty Ken, good. You've got about what 124? Yeah, I was seeing as high as 168, one of the tests oh. I did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it it's better than my round dish in some type type yeah. time. Yeah. It's it's close to what my my square dish does or my rectangular dish, um, yeah. which will will sometimes exceed 200, but you know, usually is is around that 150 range. The premium I have, that one, that's a beast. I mean, that that's getting, um, some, you know, three fifty to to four fifty is is what oh, I'm wow. seeing with that. Now that has a slightly wider field of view, so that's like 120 right. degrees. The original ones were only 100. The mini is like 110, so it does. It's a little bit better field of view. Yeah, yeah, right. So what what sort of a uh, how how much does it weigh? Just oh, the, the digital spec. The spec says it's uh, 1.1 kilograms. That's 2.3, uh, 43 pounds. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very light. It's extremely light. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And have you, have you tried out the range yet? I, you know what I did is I put it on my driveway yesterday. Um, and then I went inside the house and I was about 25 feet away through a, a double pane window. Um, uh -huh. And it was working just fine. And that's where I was getting those speeds. And that that's good because that's, yeah, that's really between the dish and your device itself. Yeah. 
Because right. you know, and that was in. An, yeah, that's indoors. That's, that's an area out. with cover. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh yeah, so that's just, right. You've got a lot of foliage around there. Yeah, trees. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which is why I was just thinking for a campsite, it's going to be pretty decent for a decent sized campsite. Yeah, you should do fine. It, it, you know, you're going to want to find the rocky outcropping or something like that that gives yeah, you yeah. pretty good visibility, or you know, pretty much wherever you have your campfire has to be open anyway. So you don't want to have all the yeah. branches over. So somewhere out there in the field, the only question yeah. is, is that your tent in the field? Is your tent back where the trees are? Yeah. And that's probably why you want to have 75 feet of cable <laughs> because, yeah. uh, you know, maybe that's where you have to, that's where your power supply is. But the problem is going to be whether you're able to pick up the range. And but mm. the solution is, as Kenneth has shown is like, you know, just bring along yeah. an ethernet cable. If that's how you plan on rolling, then you have a second router that you would be able to, to piggyback off of. So essentially, this is an extension device. <clears throat> Even if you go by the plan, I'm just wondering, um, is this kind of like a, along the way, there's this mini released on the way to direct to sell. If this is signposting direct to sell more, what do you think, Scott? Um, I mean, that's a good question. So, you know, right now, it's definitely limited. I think they're talking about like the first 10,000. So they have at least 10,000 of these that they're, they're ready to push out within the next two weeks. Um, you already have to have the Starlink dish uh, in your program. I, I imagine eventually it's going to be, you don't have to have Starlink. You can just go ahead and buy it. And then I'm not sure if it's going to be, you know, you have to maintain a monthly service fee or just turn on when you want. That's mm -hmm. not quite direct to sell, but it, it starts getting pretty close to give you that extra boost. Yeah. Because right now, Direct to sell is working, but they have limited coverage. In order for it to work, they need to have these antennas with what I call Dumbo ears. I mean, just mm. really <laughs> big antennas to be able to pick up the signal from this thing. Because this is not designed to yeah. talk to satellites. It was never meant to do that. However, there, there is enough leakage going up there that if a satellite just happens to be in the right place, it might be able to pick it up, which is amazing. Um, yeah. So that could be a way of sort of supplementing that. But the thing is, this is still drawing a lot of power. It's yeah. it's 25 watts, and it, it, you know, it'll drain this battery really quick at that. At yeah, rates. for sure. Yeah. Right. I kind think something else you could do in an emergency. Yeah, sorry, Ken. Go ahead. Right. So, something else you could do is uh, <laughs> Scott and I were joking about this. You know, just put the dish up on your head, and then <laughs> it'd be like, you know, aim at, and then <laughs> use use your phone through Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. have uh, one of those personal devices, a Zolio, because, you know, I go out to Utah in the middle of nowhere and I have this device which connects to some of the higher up satellites, you know, the Iridiums or whatever network that is. And you can only do texting, right? And you have yeah. to turn it on and you have to make sure you have service enabled prior to that. But I think this one will allow you to connect to the Starlink dishes, even if your service is disconnected. This is a speculation, but I think this is true. And then you can enable service over the Starlink network. And in an emergency situation, then you can get yeah. access to emergency right, right, personnel. Right. When, are you when are you going to try that out, Ken? <laughs> in September. Uh, <laughs> Moab. <laughs> Moab, actually, actually, actually pretty soon. So um, yeah. we're planning to go out to what I guess is now called the X takeover. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Formerly known as the Tesla takeover, but uh, that's out in California, end of July. Okay. And I'm going to be heading that way. Uh, Kenneth is also driving out there, so you'll be, uh, so you now will be able to test the mini in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bring it with it yeah. with me. Sure. Yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. 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 Scott. And, yeah, we get um, together again. I, I this, looks like I might be too because while we were discussing this, I pushed the order now button. Oh, cool! <laughs> and so let's see if I get it in two days, like like Kenneth did. I mean, that was amazing that on Thursday and you were talking about it, and then bam, it's, it's yeah. There. I was when, shocked. When did, he, when did Elon post it? Uh, was it Tuesday or Wednesday? Yeah, because the rumors were like last week, and it was all very yeah. hush hush, and no one knew about yeah. it, and suddenly. Um, you, right. you could get the specs, but only if you get like the invitation, it was right. hidden behind everyone else. And so, yeah. you know, it was getting leaked out because people were like, oh, here it is. Here's some screenshots. Um, so if you go to the normal Starlink page, they don't, sh they show all the others, but they don't show them. Yeah. Mini. They don't show this yet. Now, they, yeah. it, it may have changed. I, I stumbled on it the, the other day before I got the invitation and I was like, oh, wait a minute. I see that's up there now. So they, they may be allowing other people to look at it. But last week anyways, it was only 
a few people that actually were able to go through and take a look at the specs. Right. I had downloaded so Sawyer could see it. Oh, yep. I don't see it yet. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm trying There's to remember how I found it uh, myself. So I think it went like I maybe hit Rome or, or residential and something showed up. I'll share the link with you and then you can post it on our video here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, oh. and sometimes you, to find out more, you need to put in your residential address or, or, yeah. or your service address that you plan on using it. And then it will suddenly reveal it and say, oh, okay, here's what's available to you. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> so sometimes you have to, you know, Main Street, uh, 123 Main Street, anywhere USA. <laughs> you yeah. just kind of put that in, hope it exists as a real residence and then see and say, oh, yeah, we can give you service there. <laughs> and then you can find out what the payment program is. Yeah. But right now, this oh, is right. just in the US. Correct. Yes. I can imagine just so many use cases for this all over the world once they start expanding mm -hmm. uh, the network. It's going to be so brilliant. So a couple of things, if I could just interject this, is that Sure. The reason why it is $600 is because we're, we really are funding the places that they can't afford this as well, right? Yeah. So as an OG, you know, we'll, we'll give them some money so they can help out with the rest of the world. Um, there was another option on our on the web view for our Starlink. You select your original dish, you can select your mini dish, and then that's where I said you can do mobile data. You can also change your plans, and there was a chance, a, a, a plan that said um, mobile priority. Now I don't know. There is wiggle words in there that say something like uh, only on approved Starlink hardware and using, you know, in motion. So I don't have the details about whether they're going to enable it or not. But I'll do some testing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, there are those plans, and I agree. When we looked at it, it wasn't clear that it applied to the mini. It probably applies to the these other uh, certain because you have like the marine version and all those. I think it was really uh, being applied to that. And the there is one the, sentence in there, right? For and, and the reason for the priority is that what they're doing with the mobility is that whenever this the network is like underutilized, they will go ahead and allow you to kind of connect. But for the most part, there are people that live within a certain cell and they're, you know, that's their primary one. They get priority over everyone else. So if you come in with your RV, you know, don't expect to get priority unless they're asleep and not using it, in which case, you know, you may get really good signal and then it may drop off. And, and I've heard people say that, yeah, you know, they, they live out in the woods in the middle of nowhere. And then on Friday nights, suddenly the bandwidth goes down. And it's because, you know, they they live outside of Seattle and all the what they call the 206ers, everyone in the 206 area code in Seattle, like come out to their mountain <laughs> cabins and suddenly, you know, they're streaming Netflix. And it's like, yeah, you know, it's like usually during the week, it's great. And then Friday night, you know, Friday night. the rates go down. And that's what happens. Sharing the cell. Saturated. So then the other problem is you go to like Burning Man or something like that and everyone's yeah. bringing their Starlink dishes and like suddenly you've got like 2,000 <laughs> Starlink dishes in a cell that's only really designed to handle like 100 or something like that. So uh, it's it's going to vary. And, and that's the reason why they have these priority plans is to kind of discourage people from necessarily using it as like high bandwidth or expecting that. Yeah. So really this is as as kind of limited as it's going to be, right? It's mm -hmm. only going to get better from here on. Is this now the definitive solution for for backpackers and campers and RVs and mm. people on the move, you think, on land at least? So long as you have access to power. That, that, that I think, is yeah. the biggest trick. It's nice and light. The problem is the amount of power that you need is going to be a little bit hard to bring around. So, mm. you know, solar maybe. Um, but you're still going to want to store a little bit for if you're using it in the night. But at the same time, it's like you're, the reason you're hiking is to touch grass, right? <laughs> to not be watching Netflix, you know, on the, you know, when you're when you're climbing the Matterhorn or something like that. I mean, it's it's nice to have it, and hopefully, it's just like occasional kind of connectivity. And again, yeah. you know, it's like when you're hiking around the Matterhorn, there's pretty good 5G service right around there. So it may yeah. seem remote, but it's really not because it's a village right there. The main thing is like when Kenneth is out in the middle of, of Moab or, or Zion National Park, there's definitely going to be a lot of areas where you have zero cell phone connectivity. Yeah. And this might be, you know, a lifeline or the one way that you can sort of show everyone, hey, look what's going on here and do a live yeah. stream in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. You know, I was just, just as you were saying that, I, I was just thinking of Mount Everest and all those um, 
those crisis situations that people get themselves into. You're probably going to have them streaming from the top of Mount Everest from the summit. Yeah, that, that could end up happening. Yeah, whether, whether yeah. you want, but the thing is, they're going to have to bring that brick with them of, of, the, of a battery. Yeah, of, of, yeah but they've got the battery. Sherpas and all that, you know. Yeah, that's what they're there for. Exactly. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. I forgot. <laughs> it's a tourist destination now. Yeah. The summit of Mount Everest. So, so, yeah, so this is one of the other accessories. I'm sorry, I wanted to show you that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For a pole yeah. mount and then just a little kickstand. Right. So it yeah, okay. so it has the kickstand to make sure it's not horizontal. Yeah. Right. And it has and, holes in it. Right, and you can replace the kickstand with that, and then that will then go on to the top of a pole. And so yeah. you could still mount it on the side of your RV, side of your house, but yeah. it's silly. To, to, to mount it on the side of your house because you have to have the residential plan anyways right now to get the mini. Mm. And, and this doubles for uh, a phone mount too. <laughs> oh, oh, cool. Nice. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, Scott, so final thoughts. Um, yeah, so, I mean, I'm curious so i decided to, to go ahead and order it and, and see what it's really like and kind of compare the the different situations I, I do like the fact that it is very portable so i can like just always have it in the car if i if i need it whereas like the other dish um takes up a little bit more room in the front you know it requires a little bit more power so i should say you know the original ones are running 50 to 100 watts so mm -hmm. the fact that this is like 25 to, to 40 watts means it's more likely you would be able to run this longer uh, than the yeah. others. And so when, when I have my dish running, you know, in my model Y when I'm driving, you know, just there, just to prove a point, you know, I'm draining 50 Watts <laughs> from, from my range as I'm going along. So sometimes the thing is, do I really want this thing on? You know, <laughs> if I want to extend the range, the last thing I need is this, this vampire that's sort of sucking away the, the battery. And so certainly using the mini is, is definitely something that, is a much better solution and you don't have to worry about range anxiety afterwards. Yeah. yeah. And the fact that you can add it on as a $30 add on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then yeah. cancel or pause your order pause. because if you get a full blown dish just to be portable, then that's $120. Oh, or no, sorry. $150, right? Hundred, Yeah. 120 plus the roaming. Yes. That's a good and point, the, yeah. and so I think there's different that's roamings why I clicked as well. on the order. Right, exactly. <laughs> there's different roaming yeah. fees depending upon whether you want priority. So if you have it attached to your residence, it's it's uh, it's a little bit, but you can turn that roaming on and off. I think the only question is whether you lose priority by by turning it off. Most people with the RVs, I think they can turn it on just when they need it during the, the mm -hmm. RV season and then have it off. But they're they're at low priority. And the other thing is the inconvenience is that you know you get the dish mounted on your roof, you've got to take it down. Yeah. In my case, I've got a hatch. I can go up there and I can disconnect it and bring it down within five minutes. But most people are going to have to get out a ladder. They're going to have to climb up there. And and then, you know, then you need a second set of wires, right? Because when you take the dish down, you may have already snaked your cables and everything internally. So it's like, oh, where, where are we going to get those things? So this is way more convenient. No doubt about it. Yeah. yeah. That's what I did with my Gen 1 is I took it off my mount uh, that I had it on, pulled the wires through, Took it with me to Utah, and then set it all up. So it's a hassle. It yeah. Really is. This is yeah. so easy. I mean, weighs mm -hmm. nothing. And as you see, I mean, we, we we haven't had any dropouts. You're you're working fine with this right yeah. now. So yeah, so that that's what we're using. We made sure you're not using 5G. You're not using yeah. your home Wi-Fi or anything like that. You're using this right. And now. you're in your Cybertruck. And your Cybertruck, and it's going yeah. through the glass. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, through the front glass and the up glass just so people oh, know yeah, that mm -hmm. yeah yeah because mm -hmm. yeah. that would be perfect you could route it in the corner route it down through the wire um down through the b pillar and then up to one of the USB-C outlets in the center console and be mm. you pretty much hidden unobtrusive yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. just with some suction it always cups it popped up there yeah i, I did that in, in my model y with a couple of suction cups i had it up there and it does work on that glass roof but when we were in Muskegon last week, uh, Tess Latino, he has his actually in the back uh, with under the tunnel cover. And we were asking like, what, why do you have it on the outside? And he said, he tried mounting it in there and it wouldn't work uh, through the Cybertruck glass. 
And so we assume the tinting is different than on a Model Y, but he said, oh, but it works in, in the front glass because it's not tinted. Mm -hmm. uh, right. So I, it's interesting that you are actually getting success when he wasn't, and I'm not sure what's different. You know, I should try my, because I, it's funny, three weeks ago when the price went down on the the non-articulating version, I bought right, this, that, this, this, yeah. take to Utah, and then, and then this, I said, I'll never get a mini in time for you know the fall when i go out there and sure enough <laughs> i get the invitation 40. i might <laughs> yeah yeah might keep it or might return it i don't know yet uh, another interesting thing on the back of the dish there is a button for reset and i thought it was capacitive but today i just tested it out it's uh there's a a button underneath the cover to make it probably ip67 rated so it's all sealed and waterproof and Dustproof, mostly. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. And and the thing to point out is is Ken is a double E, um, so he, he knows his way around like capacitors and resistors and multimeters and a few other things there. And for those who don't know, you know the the IP is intrusion protection, um, yeah. where the six seven the six means you know to dust and particulates and stuff like that. And six is the highest you can have for like particulates, and seven is almost the highest you can have for water. Mm -hmm. uh, that basically means it's um, it, it's strongly water resistant, almost waterproof. Yeah. You, you can drop it in a meter of water, leave it there for thirty minutes, and there won't be a problem. Yeah. So, I mean, rain. So that's what you need if you're yeah. going backpacking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you happen to actually drop it in a, a body of water, it won't be an issue. You'll be able to fish it out really quickly, and it should be fine. Uh, rain so, is not a problem. All the Starlink dishes are designed to be outdoors, so they, they can handle rain. They can handle horizontal rain. They can handle like um, water jets. Maybe not high pressure, but uh, exactly. It's it's because there's have, the gaskets have multiple seals on them, so right, you get right. basically um, three. That's you've true got on this. Yeah, yep. and I'll, also on the power cable. Now, see, my phone is overheating because it's in the windshield, so I have to bring it closer to get some air. On it. <laughs> so I wonder how hot that thing's getting because I, the ratings, the ratings for temperature. Uh, let's see. 122 Fahrenheit is operating temperature. So mm -hmm. I bet it's yeah. not that hot. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just don't yeah. crash it on the, don't smash it on the rocks when you go. But, but yeah. For anything else, it's good. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, this has been wonderful. Ken, thank you so much. And Scott, thank you for uh, yeah. being Ken yeah. on. Uh, let me just pull up uh, Ken's profile on, on X. That's him there. Utah Temp. So Utah temp. please. Yeah, if you're watching this, follow Ken. Hopefully, we'll have you back again um, yeah. for let's. What's what's it? you've had it for? What about three days? One day. <laughs> One yeah. day. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah yesterday. Do, Today's the second week. day. Yeah. <laughs> How cool is that? Okay. Yeah. So, we, yeah. Well, let Let's do a uh, let's Let's have let you have it for about uh, a fortnight or so, and then see if we can get right. you back. And you know. Yep. Let's and I'm it. also treasurer of the Michigan Tesla Owners Club, so. Make sure if you're listening, sign up next year, and we're gonna have a big event. Scott's gonna be there, and a whole bunch of other people. Right. the The Muskegon uh, Tesla Roundup Muskegon. is gonna be much bigger. It's it's actually the Tesla Con next year. So all of go. the owners groups come together for that because they they meet once a year at some location, yeah. and next year it's gonna be Muskegon. And you you know, just take just take a look at the um, the light show we did uh, that Simon Pollock did for us. And you can see just how beautiful the, the venue is there out in heritage, uh, landing. Yeah. I believe Muskegon there's some in, beautiful uh, drone shots. Oh yeah. Yeah. And M Muskegon is a beautiful town. It's, it's a, it's a nice little artsy town with, with all sorts of nice little restaurants and craft breweries and stuff like that. And, and the waterfront there, you, you would swear you're at the ocean, you know, you're just looking at the beach. It's just so beautiful. But what yeah. we like to say in Michigan about, about our lakes is like no salt, no sharks. <laughs> Well, thank you both, gentlemen. It's been wonderful uh, chatting with you and super getting this opportunity to kind of do a hands-on review. Thank you, Ken uh, and Scott. It's been great. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you, Ken. Thank you, Raiden.